All right, so today I want to talk about what it's like to actually be a lucid dreamer. This is like a day in the life sort of thing. I'm not going to go through my actual day with a vlogging camera because that might be a bit weird. Um, but I'm just going to talk about my daily routine and like how it actually feels to be a lucid dreamer. Because a lot of people are wondering this. A lot of people just have no idea, you know, what actually what it's like when they achieve success in lucid dreaming and actually are able to have lucid dreams reliably. So firstly, as a sort of a summary to this, lucid dream does feel incredible. Like to be able to be a lucid dreamer and have these experiences on a regular basis, it, re it feels like you're a superhuman and that you're sort of in control and uh, you're able to direct your dreams any way you want. Now, I have said before that you can't control every aspect of it, but that doesn't really matter. You know, these experiences are so profound that you don't really need to control every aspect of it. You just, you're just you happy to just be in the dream and experiencing it in the way that you are. Another thing, it's almost never the way you expect it to be. So if you've never had a lucid dream and you're just sort of thinking about it, you're trying to learn how, you don't really know what to expect, when you do finally have your first lucid dream, it's not going to be how you expect, right? It's going to be completely different. It's, it's hard to imagine something that you've never experienced. And no matter how many articles you read or, or you know, these videos you watch, it's never going to prepare you for what actually it feels like. Sure, I can describe it to you and I can tell you how it feels and what it, you might want to expect, but the actual experience that you personally will have it's very subjective. It will be completely different to my first lucid dream and to everyone else's first lucid dream. So that you can't really predict or you know expect what's going to happen. You just have to do it and then see how it feels. Right? Now the problem is right. One of the most common problems that really annoys me, and I'm sure it annoys a lot of people as well, is that the more you read about it, okay, the more stories you read. Now I'm not saying don't read stories. By all means, read stories and articles about lucid dreams. But the more of them that you read and internalize the more likely it is that you're gonna then expect your lucid dreams to be like that story you read, and then subconsciously you're gonna change it. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If every story you read, or even if you read one story that says, when I lucid dreamt, there was a like high-pitched shrieking noise and there was a demon chasing me or something, it's gonna make it that more like that much more likely that you will then lucid dream about that. And you know that's something that wouldn't have happened unless you'd read that story. This is why I'm very glad that my first lucid dream, I had it before I even knew what it was. You know, it was an accident. I was I was a kid, you know, I don't know if you've heard my story, it's on it's on my website on the about page. But I, you know, I was a kid, I didn't really know what lucid dream was at all. I had this experience randomly, like sort of by accident, and then I started to research about lucid dreaming, about what it was and how to do it properly, you know, with an intention of doing it. But you know, I'm very glad that I didn't have these expectations of it before having that first experience because it's so much more exciting. You know, when you when you have something like that and you experience it just completely out of the blue without knowing what it was, without expecting it, without, you know, planning it or trying to experience it, it's just that much more profound. You know, it made that much more of an impact on me. And I'll always remember my first lucid dream. So we're going to talk about my my daily routine as a lucid dreamer. Now, I should dis I should uh, provide a disclosure here. This is not what I do every single day. Like some days if I'm not feeling well, if I'm busy, if I'm excited about doing something else, I'll skip a day or two. But most days this is the this is the morning routine I follow if I want to lucid dream. So, before opening my eyes, the first thing I do is I'll wake up, keep my eyes closed and think about the dreams that I've just had. If I can remember any, tr I'll try and focus on the memory of them solidify the details and create a story in my head that I can articulate when I write them down. That way when you open your eyes you're not going to instantly forget all the details. That really does happen a lot. You know, if you have your alarm, it wakes you up, you suddenly open your eyes and then before you know it your your brain is filled with the sensory information of the room and the the sounds and sights and everything like that like that. You're going to pretty quickly forget the dreams you've just had because they're detached from what you're experiencing now and what your senses are experiencing now. So it really is important that you, if you want to remember your dreams better, this is a really simple way. You know, just keep your eyes closed until you've got the details in your head, and then when you open your eyes, you should be able to articulate the dream, write it down, at least write the notes or the key concepts down, and then go on with your day from there. So the next step is I'll obviously slowly open my eyes and then write my dreams down. It's pretty self-explanatory, I'll just write them in the dream journal, highlight the important bits, put the date, and tick whether I was lucid or not. Now, once I've done that, the next thing I'll do is I'll do a reality check. Now, the reason I do a reality check first thing in the morning is because I always try and avoid false awakening loops or false awakenings 
in general. They're not a pleasant experience, they're not really conducive to lucid dreams unless you do a reality check, you know, first thing in the morning, every morning. Because think about it, if you're, a false awakening is where you dream about waking up, a dream, you dream about going through your routine, and then you're snapped back into the bed. But imagine if, the, imagine if your routine in the morning was to do a reality check, then every time you have a false awakening, you'll do a reality check in the, in the false awakening dream, and it would make you lucid, and then that way you'd instantly avoid the false awakening loop, you'd avoid the lucid nightmare, or the normal nightmare, and you'd just have a lucid dream. And then that from that point you could decide to either wake up, or to just enjoy the lucid dream and then wake up. It puts the, it puts the power back in your hands. So then, once I've done that, I've written my dreams down, I've woken up, I've done a reality check, I'll just go over to the chair in the corner of my room, and I'll meditate. And, you know, I'll meditate from anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on how much time I have or how much time I feel like I need to meditate for. Uh, and again, this just this just builds the self-awareness habit. This builds the, the practices of lucid dreaming into my routine and into my habits so that I'm able to more easily randomly lucid dream. I almost never use wake back to bed and wild techniques anymore. I just use these sort of softer methods and techniques where... I won't need to do something specific, I'll just sort of build the habits of awareness, writing dreams down, meditating, and uh, eventually, and over time, you naturally lose a dream. It happens spontaneously because your awareness is that much higher than if you didn't do these things. So that's that's it, that's the morning routine. I, you know, I don't do this every single morning, but that is pretty much how it goes. I should, uh, again, disclosure here, you don't need to do that routine in order to lucid dream, and as I've said, I don't do it every single morning, um, but if, you know, for example, if I really want to do some dream work, or if I want to, specifically, I want to lucid dream a lot, sort of now, you know, maybe I want to try something out, maybe I want to do an experiment, do some research, then I will do this morning routine every day, but if I don't, you know, if I'm just sort of happy doing a casual lucid dream every few days, or, you know, even once or twice a week, then I won't do the lucid dream morning routine. Um, but yeah, as a beginner, I would suggest that you do follow something like this just because it makes it more likely. And as it's a new habit for beginners, you know, you need all the help you can get, whether that be through reading articles, trying different techniques, having a routine, um, you know, coaching, whatever it is, whatever you feel is gonna help you. Even supplements uh, to some degree, although I wouldn't recommend supplements for beginners. Not for most beginners anyway. It helps to have a morning routine. But you don't need to do this in order to lucid dream. You can very easily do it without this morning routine. So that leads me on to the last part of this, which is the struggles of being a lucid dreamer. Because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some difficult parts of this. There are some aspects of this that might make you not want to do it. You know, not want to become a lucid dreamer or not want to learn how to do this stuff. And the first one of these is just that if you do, if you practice certain techniques, right, meaning the wake back to bed, the wild, uh, and a couple of others as well, but mainly those two, you're going to feel tired in the morning. And not only that, but if you, so you've got these, these techniques which make you interrupt your sleep, like the wake back to bed, the wild. They involve cutting your sleep short, waking up earlier than you would have done, and therefore feeling fatigued the next day. So that's obviously a problem. That can make you feel tired if you need to perform at work or school or whatever. Then you've also got the other side of it, which is the the dream chaining side. Now I love dream chaining. Dream chaining is where you wake up, you set your alarm to go off every 10 or 20 minutes, and you just you just ride a chain of lucid dreams, or that's the idea anyway, for several hours. And you know, you, by doing this, you'll end up sleeping until about 10 or 11. Um, it's really something that I would advise you to do on weekends, just because it does involve sleeping in. Um, but yeah, if you are a lucid dreamer, you do want to do those things more often. You know that you want to do that, right? So then the thought of having to go to work or school at 9 a.m. or whatever becomes less and less appealing. So yeah, you just have to be aware that certain techniques that you'll want to try involve interrupting your sleep or changing your sleep, and you know that might make you feel tired or perform worse at school or university or work or whatever. Then the last part is what your friends will say. Friends and colleagues will always have something to say about lucid dreaming, you know, it's not it's not a boring topic, you know, if you said to someone I can control my dreams and pretty much do whatever I want, they're not going to say, oh, yeah, it's pretty boring. Lucid dreaming is fairly interesting, right, and as a concept, like, if you told that to someone who hadn't heard about it, most times they would either have something to say that's positive or something to say that's negative. It's quite polarising, you know, it's very rare that people would just say, oh, that's boring or I don't care. They're either going to say, that's really interesting, tell me more, tell me how to do it, 
and they'll start asking you questions. Or they'll go the other way and they'll say, that's ridiculous, it's unproven, it's fake, you know, you can't do that, that's ridiculous. And it's up to you to then decide how you react to that. Like, do you try and prove it to them as if you're trying to prove something to yourself? You know it's real, you've experienced it yourself, but do you, do you try and prove it to the people that are saying that? Or do you just let them find out for themselves? Or do you just say nothing? You know, most, most times I end up just linking them to some proof or some articles uh, proving that it's real. But in general, like if someone doesn't like the idea of lucid dreaming, you can't really convince them otherwise. Until they've actually had one themselves, they'll either not think it's real or not want to try. So you've got to be aware that your friends will have something to say. You will always have to explain what it is and how it works. You, you can't just say, oh, I had a cool lucid dream last night because most people won't know what that means. So there's that aspect of it as well. But all in all, I wouldn't give it up for the world, you know, lucid dreaming is an amazing part of my life. Um, it's encouraged me and motivated me to do all sorts of amazing things like the travelling and all sorts of stuff. So go ahead, subscribe, leave a comment and I'll see you next time.